Another beautiful day to be a raider. Draped in the silver and black. I represent the shield. I represent the swords. It's that time of night again, Raider Nation. And you come back. Why? Because it's time. Time to bring them. Oh yeah! What's up, Raider Nation? I am the Commish, coming to you live from Hardcore Channels Live Studios. Deep behind the enemy line. This is Raider Reaction, and as we do every Tuesday. On Raider Reaction, I bring you my Raider Nation report. And we are going to start off with the condensed game recap of this week's win. Giants start out with the ball. As they benched Manning. Three and out, man. The defense started solid. The defense played well all game, as we will see. Now, I was losing my mind in this game over Rashad and him putting the ball on the ground repeatedly. Beast mode. We have been making it a point to get Beast mode the ball. Ever, been, it's steadily since New England game. And right here, baby. Boom. Beast mode. Touchdown, Raiders. Watch Calvin 
He's starting to make his impact. I've been saying it all season. And it's not about yards with Marshawn. It's not about stats. It's about impact on the team. Just gashes them to start this football game. And I got to tell you, Ken, that's pretty par for the course for the Giants. They are not very good at run defense. One guy out of his gap. Huge touchdown for the Raiders. What's up, Norcal? What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me on the Raider Reaction. The Raider Nation Report with yours truly, the Commish. As we do it every Tuesday. Handed him the ball more than 15 times in a game, so expect a lot of what we've already seen with Marshawn Lynch. I agree, Bob, 100%, and we will discuss that. Oh! Bruce Irvin played with some fire this game. I'm not going to lie. The defense as a whole, since the move has been made, they've got a spark lit. They've got a spark lit. Lynch does run better with the fullback, and on the fourth and one here later in the game that we go for, you'll notice there's a single back set with no fullback, and it was driving me nuts at the time. Knew Marshawn was getting it, and they gave him nobody in front of him to run behind. Rashard, one of the few times he didn't put the ball on the ground when the ball was in his hands. They're really trying to get Patterson the ball in space just to get him because he is so fast north-south down the field. His acceleration is one of his best assets. Nice pursuit. Forced another punt. Their first nine plays wins third punt here in the first quarter. Rashard lost the handle. Again. I was, by this time, I'm yelling to pull Rashard. Because when you start to see a guy have the gips like that, man, and he starts putting it on the ground, now he's starting to think about it. And now it's in his head. It's not in his head forever, but it's in his head for that day. And they continue to roll the dice. And he continued on an incomplete pass later. He put it on the ground. It's, it was risky. Ball start. Number 66 offense. Five-yard penalty remains. Third down. Giants now send in seven defensive backs. Third down at 17. As Carr fires downfield. Takes the shot. He was looking for Isaac Whitney. And then... I could have seen, I really could have seen a flag there. I really could have seen a flag there. He was not looking back for the ball. He really didn't know where it was, and he was there early. But you know, the Raider rules. With the pursuit. There's holding in every freaking play, Wesley. Every play. It's like it's like the rest just would feel bad if they threw a flag every damn time. But they should throw a flag every time. Because Matt gets around his guy every time and they're holding him as he goes by. Every fucking time. Giant wide out is shaking up. Number 38 defense. Penalty is declined. The play is the 
Again, nice pressure. We were attacking. And you know, you know what? Even though that ended up being a little bit of a big play, I'm not even mad at that. Because did you see that? He was in the position, and he went for the ball and tried to make a play. Now, if you're there, and you're trying to make a play, man, I can, I can look past every once in a while. If you're straight up just getting burnt, that's different. Oh, we could have played better, Kevin. Absolutely. We carried a 10 and 7 score for how long in this game? There's no way we should have been talking a 10 and 7 score for as long as we carried it in this game. No way. We did not step on the throat. We did not go for the kill. We could have snuffed this game out and took it completely out of reach quickly. And we did not. You cannot play around with good teams like that. I would like to see it, Bob. We were calling for that at the uh, at the Florida Raider Nation event that I was at this weekend. We were calling for that very thing. That's what we were calling for, a stick Patterson back there. And any time you can get the ball into that guy's hands, I say it's a uh, good opportunity. Adds the extra point. We may get it, Luis. We may get it. Uh, three and out of their first three possessions. On the I still believe, line. man. We're going to talk about that after this is over. This is Rashad as the Giants three tight ends on the field for Oakland. Beast mode. They're really making, I mean, Beast Mode gets 26 touches this game. They are making a point to get him the ball. For a first down, there is a flag. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, number 25, defense. Penalty is declined. The result for the play is a first down. But make sure you stick around after the condensed game. We will have the rest of the Raider Nation report as we will go back in studio with myself and get into all the hot league news and the breakdown of this AFC West battle. Finding that soft D, that soft middle that we have in our pass coverage. But they can't seem to exploit it. It just becomes apparent at a point in this game that the Giants just are not going to be able to score unless we do something stupid and allow them to. Every play, Wesley. Every play. <laughs> Every play. Five yard coverage. You can't, it's, it's, it, it, oh man, the amount of sacks and pressures that he could get if he wasn't held on every play is, is just obscene. Pressure, nice pressure again. Bruce with the big play. Bruce showed up, man. Bruce had a big game. The defense as a whole had a big game. Cole Mack had a big game. Only five attempts already. We need the offense to come around. The defense is starting to. It's a nice play right there to get the first. Again, like I said, Richard just, he was so close so many times to losing the ball for us this game. I don't know what, he, just a bad day at the office, what the deal was, but I think he should have been pulled a ways before this, start seeing a little more Washington. Maybe that's why we see more Washington at the end. Sometimes, it, sometimes the guys just have an off day. Doesn't mean he's going to get benched permanently, but maybe you just need to a little, see a little less of you when you put the ball on the ground. Man for Patterson, and second seven 
Johnny, you got to make that play, baby. This is Lynch. And again, not much. Six yards on four carries since his long touchdown run. There we go. Look, B smoke. Man, he runs. B I just love the way Marshawn runs. When he starts feeling it, man, he runs angry. Oh man. You know what? I honestly think he got the sun in his eyes right there. Or maybe he got I don't know. Well, he's kind of in the... Sh I, no, no, the sun's back there because of the shadowing. So it's not the sun. Well, I don't know what the hell it was. The sun was behind him, so it's not the sun. They hit him right in the damn chest. That's just... That was luck right there. He put it right in his gut, man. He still dropped it. Again, nice penetration by the defense. He's got the happy feet, Luis. We've been talking about it for a couple weeks now. We, me and the captain have been talking about it on our halftime show as well. He's got the happy feet, man. He's just not standing there confident and stepping and firing like he typically does. It, I think it's a... Uh, Nice, Marshawn pushing the pile. I think it's just a product of two injuries, of getting hit more than he's typically used to. And Seth Roberts picks up a Raiders first down. Geno Smith is doing all right so far today. Carr's pass incomplete for Derek Carr and the Raiders. Ah, uh, come on, you gotta catch that. Now the Raiders will punt it away as And this man, this was just a total gaff job. The, when you look at the replay, the assignments were his blocking assignments were completely blown. Completely blown. That was just a total gaff play. About three guys come clean, untouched. How the hell can you even have that? How can you even have that? Defense, neutral zone infraction, number 52. And this is a bullshit call, too. On defense, you're allowed to come across and get back. The guy did not move on his move. It was bullshit. Another Raider rules call. Over the head of Sterling Shepard on the Raiders four yard line. And then there he is, ladies and gentlemen. My Pirates in attendance, your reigning defensive player of the year, Mr. Cole Mack. Let me introduce the man with the hardware in his house. Because this took points right off the board. Because they were either tying us or taking the lead right here. And when you have a momentum swing, he took it right back. So I don't think so. Ola Wale, they need to get him in the game. We were talking about that, me and the captain, on uh, uh, Sunday's game. Need to see more Ola Wale. Outside the football game about how this team plays here and through the last four games of the season. A short kickoff. We have a solid fullback. We need to Washington. use him. What's up, Lance? Purposes, they are doing a great job. And the special teams as well. 
play made by Sean Smith on Khalif Raymond earlier. This is Raymond on the return, and he'll be brought down at the 15-yard line. Smith of the Giants start from the 15-yard line. Dark one. You have Okay, this 10-7. We carried it for way too long in this game. This was a period of the game where we just, our offense somewhat gets stagnant, and we just can't seem to get that at two point, two score lead to really stretch this game and put pressure on them. We allow them to have some confidence and continue to stay in this game. It's just our defense was too much for them. They just couldn't move the ball on us really. They were getting a few first downs here and there, but as a whole, our defense was really playing well. I feel you, Michael. I feel you. Once again, it's Tavares King who makes the catch out of the 42-yard line. Smith steps up and throws. Nice defense right there by TJ. Tenor receiver. The Raiders. Matt Wing punting from his 32-yard line. Fair catch ball for by Richard. Richard again, close there. You know, it wasn't a clean, 100% catch. He was just, he, man, he was scaring me. Walford. There's a Walford sighting. Anybody that knows me know I've been talking about Walford for a few years. He's, I've been a big Walford fan. He's had some big games. And there's another one. That that's a that's an interception nine out of ten times. Except when you're having a season like the Giants are having, you just don't get those. And we're lucky to have that back. The Walford was there. He just overthrew him. First and ten, 41 yard line with three tight ends. The handoff goes to Lynch. And second down and six. As Carr goes over the top and it's dropped by Lynch. Raiders must get to the 31 for a first down. Carr being chased, and then he throws it away. They sure have. He moves it downfield. Beautiful. Man, when you got a punter like that, that's a freaking weapon right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's a weapon right there. Smith broken up, intended for Tavares King. Good coverage, really, by Sean Smith to begin with. And then he just Sean Smith has been playing well, man. Say what right you there. want about Sean Smith, but he's been playing well. You've got to be aggressive when you're an NFL quarterback. If you're not going to be aggressive, you're not going to survive. You're going to be eaten alive. you got to have an attitude. That's why the best corners have the attitudes that they do, man. you got to have a little swagger to play out there. You're one-on-one -on, -one on an island playing against the superstar possibly of the league on any given Sunday. You wonder why Carr's got the happy feet? That's why, right there. Takes one or two of those. He starts with the pitter patter feet in the pocket and doesn't set and fire. Oh. Holton, come on! What could have been a big play? Another miscue as the 10 and 7 continues. I'm telling you, we carry this 10 and 7 forever. 
Freaking Mac over there with his freaking low budget Pat Riley looking ass. Again, see how many times, man. When do you not pull the guy? You're like, damn, every time he touches the ball, he's got the freaking dip fingers. Get him the hell out of there. It's beyond confidence at that point. It's just one of them days. Get him out. We were so lucky that that did not bite us in the ass. By beast mode. Nice. Very nice moves, man. Makes a couple of people miss. Now this was beautiful. That, that, that almost made you forget all the other bullshit Johnny did the rest of the game. Because then you got touchdown Raiders. Right after that. Off his big catch. And that's the score we need right there. We've been carrying that 10 to 7 for way too long this game. And we just needed that one score to put it up, and we knew that was all it was going to take. The Giants were just going to collapse after that. They just don't have the, they ain't got the firepower to come back down two scores. But it took way too long. Way too long. For them to put the game out of reach. Way too long. tracks and I was just like dude come on tag him inside the 15 to the 13 yard line Smith looked to throw holding right there oh my god I mean when he's trying to pull the guy off of me he's running away geez every freaking play they're holding back And then they get a freaking touchdown. Hold, like, holding, fucking holding, man. Good God. And then they get a touchdown. And this is a fantastic route. Bunch of shit. This route to perfection. It's just a little dink out, step out. I'm going to turn up field. Sold it perfectly. And then the pass is on time. Back of the end zone. Touchdown. This was a good decision. He got the protection he needed. Good job by Eric Flowers there. You see him deal with the counter of Khalil Mack. It's a that one was helped the defense, well done. by the officials not throwing a goddamn flag. Now, if the team is as shitty as the Giants are, you telling me they're not, they're this well fucking disciplined? Are you kidding me? Three of the four touchdown passes, Ryan Nassib the other, and now Geno Smith today. Only the third Giant Oh, that was a good play, Darius. I, I don't disagree. But the plays that led up to that, that were penalty, uncalled, penalty, uncalled, that allowed them to get in the position to make that play, is more what I'm talking about than that play, really. Now, there's a huge play right there by Patterson. That's what they've been we're trying to do all game, is you just get it to him in space, 
he needs about one to two seconds to accelerate. And that dude, can, he can make things happen. Now this, man, I think this was a worthy challenge. You have to challenge this call. Why not? You don't want to leave that in your pocket. Because the world's going to watch this a million times. And if this ended up going the other way, whether or not his knee was you, down, you really can't see it. I, I, man, I can way. see where it was, now, Darius. I agree. I can see where it was, man. Knee down means inbounds in every way, shape, or form to me. So I'm, it looked good to me, man. But that looked even, oh, and then he dropped it. <laughs> but he was in there. <laughs> DC's telling him, yeah, that was good, man. Yeah, that was good. Oh, he's in. He was in big and bad. They took the shot. They broke the plane before the hit for Landon Collins. All oh, he was in. Plays are reviewed, so they will take a look at it, but it certainly looks like it's a Raiders score. Well, great play design. Getting your wide receiver working on linebacker Kelvin Shepard there. That was a touchdown, Raiders. He wanted to go with by coaches from the University of Cincinnati while he was playing flag football. He did not have the opportunity to play in the postseason last year. And that was the one that pretty much put it out of reach for him. Well, it's that Raider, it's the Raider rules again, Bob. They live by a different set of rules when they're calling Raider games. They just do. I don't know if it's psychological or, or what the hell it is, but they do. It's it's obvious. Some Raider rules. Oh, tell the the drops are terrible, man. But we've got they've gotten better. Now this this is an amazing freaking catch, man. I, I got to give it up. That was that was one hell of a catch. Man, that's a big play right there. Because you know Gino was getting that first in about another half step. He was starting to pull away. That was a big play right there. His kick is good. Up a fight. Maybe a little overmatched against this Oakland team. Need an onside kick here. And we're well versed with these onside kicks this year. Nice try. They're trying that, they're trying that shit on us again. And there you go, Raider Nation. The New York Giants. There you go. All right, bear with me a moment as we switch cameras. In studio here. Bear with me. And we will get to the remainder of the Raider Nation report. So, I hope you enjoyed 
reliving that great victory from this uh, past Sunday, week 13, as we took care of the Giants. Handled our business, so to speak. And that put us in a very, very good position. Because at the beginning of the year, if I told you, Raider Nation, that in week 14, you will be in a three-way tie for the AFC West title, and the two teams that you are currently tied with, you will play both of them in the last four games. So half of your games directly affect the division race. If I told you that at the beginning of the season and say we could stick you right there, would you take it? Hell yes, you would take that. To be tied for the division lead in any way, shape, or form. Any way, shape, or form. is all you can really want as a fan coming into the season. There's four games left. Two of the teams were tied with. The two teams were tied with. We play both of them. And one, the hottest team of the two, we close the season with. So we directly hold our own destiny in the palm of our hands. Our own playoff destiny is all ours. All ours. Let's take a quick look at the four teams, the schedules going forward. The Chokers have the skins this week as we face off with the Queefs. So this week we hold Destiny in our hands. We got to hope the Redskins can go out to L.A. and take care of them. It's a good possibility. It's a good possibility. Then if we take care of the Chiefs, like I believe we can, we're looking at a home game against the Cowboys. And then the Chokers and the Queefs face off. So one of them is taking a loss the very next week. One of them, the two of them, is guaranteed a loss. The very next week. So that makes the race right there very interesting. Because there's a very good possibility if we beat the Chiefs this week, and the Chargers beat the Chiefs this week, the Chiefs could be out of the conversation quick. That's one scenario. Or if they both dropped one, and we dropped one of those two games, we're all still sitting at a tie. And we're rebooting with two games left. At 7-7. Seven and seven. There are so many scenarios that can work themselves out over the course of these next few weeks. It would, it would hurt your brain to try and keep up. <laughs> and, and I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless, almost, with, with what can transpire and shake out over this last four game stretch December I posted it earlier on the page playoff runs are built in December always always have it's all about December football the rest of the shit is all positioning it's like qualifying you just want to put yourself in a position when you make that sprint you've got everything put together as good as you're going to fucking get it for the season this is as good as we're going to get it. Let's do this. So now we're at now or never. And December is when champions are started to be built. It's 
just like qualifying up until now. So, yes, we were a little, eh, we were up and down. We were a little sloppy here and there. We even changed defensive coordinators. But you know what? December's here. And we're 6-6. Six and six. We're tied for the... It doesn't even matter. Fuck the record. December is here. And we are in a three-way tie for the AFC West division title. There's no other detail you need besides that. Three-way tie for the division title. One month to go. It all ends on New Year's Eve, baby. In L.A. Jokers. We got the ring in L.A. LA's a silver and black town, baby. It's a silver and black town. And we're going to finish it on New Year's Eve. I Last season, with what happened, the Christmas Eve nightmare, ugh, makes me dread holiday games now. Because I've never had a game, a holiday game ruin a holiday for me like last season. I was like catatonic for the rest of the night. I, I even woke up. It was the first thing I thought about when I got up in the morning. So I just have a, I have a feeling that this season, the holidays are going to be good. The football is going to do me right. That the Raiders are going to do, do me right this season. Going to do the nation right this season through the holidays. They're going to give us a nice big Christmas win against an overrated-ass Eagles team who's the benefit of a weak-ass schedule. And we're going to claim a division crown on New Year's Eve, stepping into the new year. Division champs. You've all heard me say it before. The story. Every season is a story. Can't you see the story? Starting to write itself. The turmoil. Was the beast mode a good move? Get rid of Norton. Cars hurt. Broken back. Oh my God. How much drama has there been this season? Draft picks. They got hurt, never even produced. And then all of a sudden, the last month of the season, they start to get it together. I can see it. I can see the story. They've got to do their part to write it. They've got to do their part to write it. Because every season becomes an NFL Films, America's Game. They, do, they put orchestra music over it. They slow-mo it up. They follow the ball in flight. All that fancy shit. And it gets stored away. In the annals of time and in the off season, they'll play it over and over again with all the other ones. And after years, 10 years, five years even goes by, you look back at that year and you only remember that year for who hoisted the trophy, who was the story of the year. What the hell else happened in 85? You have no idea. Because you only know the Bears. 46D. That was their year. 72 Dolphins. That was their year. 76 Raiders. 83 Raiders. 
You don't know. You don't know what else, who else did what that year. Doesn't matter. They're just a small chapter in the story that is the champion of that year. The loser is just a chapter. You lose the Super Bowl. It's almost like disgraceful. It's almost like you wish you didn't even make it. It's almost better to just get eliminated in the championship game than hoist a meaningless championship trophy and then go and lose on the biggest stage in the world. One of my personal worst memories was watching the Raiders lose in 2002. By far, one of my worst Probably the worst sporting memory, personally for me, has to be one of them. I can't think. Of, I can't think of another. Never thought and really stopped and thought about it, but I can't think of another. The Tuck Rule, the game and slam by Saragusa's big fat sloppy gelatinous ass. Those all sucked equally, but those two. Just kept us out of the Super Bowl. They weren't actually in it. Although when both of those incidents happened, I knew we were going to get. I knew we were getting screwed. So looking ahead this week, because we have digested everything we need out of the Giants game. Everything we need. So we can bury it, put it to rest. It's time to think queefs now. They're on, they're in shitsville right now. They're spinning, spiraling down the toilet, the NFL toilet. And the chokers seem to be our most legitimate competition right now. When... A month and a half ago, six or seven weeks ago, when the Chiefs were the only undefeated team in the league, <laughs> Alex Smith was the next greatest thing since sliced fucking bread. I think we have this game. We get Crabtree back. There's a very good possibility we can have Coop this weekend. He is not... He is very questionable still. It is the ankle, not the concussion. I got a feeling it's going to come down to a game-time decision for Coop. But I certainly hope he can play this game. Because have him and Crabtree on the edges would be huge. But just having Crab back gives that solid go-to guy. And the other guys performed very well. Holton performed well. He did have the fumble. He did have a couple drops. But he did make a couple big plays when it counted. The nice toe tap on the sideline. And then the touchdown. Patterson had a good game. Roberts was making plays. So... Just the addition of having Crab back, him alone I feel very confident in the Kansas City game. Just adding him to the ones we have. Now Coop would be an even bigger bonus. But Crab gives us those, those hands, baby. Gives us those hands that you need in the red zone. Oh, I got a feeling, Hot Neil, you're going to get a dose of the beast this week. You are going to get a dose of the beast this week. Absolutely. 100%. Agree with that. Absolutely 100%. Could not agree with you more. Could not agree with you more. I think you've got to continue... This is the time of the year when beast mode can be hugely impactful. This is the time of the year when you got to feed the man. 
you got to feed the beast this time of the year. Completely agree with that, 100%. So, as I do every Raider Nation report, every time I'm just on by myself, I like to end my shows to a little segment. I like to call the WTF. Now you can use your imagination. For what that actually means. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll figure it out before by the time we get to the end. Now I've been very good. And I have man I have stayed out of all of the Raider groups. The NFL groups, I have I have banished myself from them because I just kept getting myself in trouble when I go in there. Because I, I one comment by me turns into a hundred and because I won't back down when one of these slack jaw assholes try to come at me with some weak ass shit. I will I will rebuttal and rebuttal and rebuttal and rebuttal. I just can't. So I gotta stay out of there. I have to stay out of there. So. But, I was poking around, I've been poking around in there, here the last few days, just spectating, just spectating, just looking around, and I see a lot of them starting to pop up. They're starting to posture, and, and you know what they're posturing for, because it's December. Oh, can you smell it? It's December. Plows, plows are in the air. Oh my God. The regular season's winding down. Oh, my God. Well, I, I yeah, you know, they're, they're my favorite team, but, but I like these guys, too. You know, well, at least my other team's going to be in the playoffs. You're starting to hear that already, because they're starting to, the, the bandwagon fans are starting to posture themselves. They're moving closest... Close to the edges of bandwagons around the country. Ready to jump the hell off that one. And jump on the others. So, it's going to happen. As soon as the regular season ends, there's going to be a flood. And a saturation. Of bitch ass fans. Latching on to every team that makes the playoffs. Happens every year. Stand your guard. Next to your door on the train. Do not let any weak ass bandwagon fans on the Raider train. No, 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 no. Because it is not okay. If your team's eliminated, then fucking deal with it. And root against... Other teams to win like I do. I root for teams to lose. I no longer ever, I never ever, ever. Did I, did I say ever? Ever root for another team to win. Never. I will root for another team to lose though. But I will not root for the other team to win. Oh no. Oh no. Chokers Redskins? I ain't rooting for the fucking Redskins. Fuck no I'm not. Fuck the Redskins. But I'm rooting for the Chokers to lose that game. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not going to fucking stand up and rah-rah fucking skins if I'm there. But I will fucking laugh when the Chargers throw a pick, when the Chokers fumble. You get the difference? That's called being a diehard fucking fan. You don't jump bandwagons. You know, well, my other team's in the playoffs. I'm, I'm, I'm really a Giants fan, but them Vikings, 
Oh, I'm one of them Vikings. You fucking douchebag. That shit's not cool. That did. A fan is what, Raider Nation? It's short for fanatic. You are fanatical about your team. You have an emotional vested interest in your team. You care. These motherfuckers don't care. They don't give a shit. They just want to go to the party. They just want to go to the parade. They just want to be around the hubbub and the, the joy of the win. You know what? You motherfuckers don't joy the... You do not deserve to have the joy of the win. You don't deserve to have it. Bandwagon fans do not deserve the joy that they siphon and steal off of the real fans. They don't deserve it. The fans that deserve it are the ones that survived through 14 years of suck. It does look cool, Will. It does look cool. But you know what? Every time we see one of these stupid ass fans, I got an AFC team and I got an NFC team. If you're one of those guys, just know just know, when you're at the party, and all the other guys are standing over there, and it looks like they're talking about you, they are. And they're all saying the same thing, this motherfucker. When this bitch-ass Ravens fan last year, when this bitch-ass is such-and-such such fan last year. They're all calling you out. We all know it. We smell your bitch ass, fake ass a mile away. Fucking bandwagon fans. Don't try climbing up on our train. Get the fuck out of here. Because we're going to the playoffs and we don't need your tag along ass coming. Because we're all looking at you saying the same thing. What the fuck? Follow us on Twitter at Raider Reaction. Hardcore Challenge live studio webcasts on YouTube. Go and subscribe. Tune in tomorrow. Ghost to the Post. Silver and black coast to coast with myself and NorCal Raider Rick. We got solid shows the rest of the week, plus BC's Saturday Night Hype Show. I'm out. Peace. Love. Raider Nation.